What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore Project Ozone 3 Expert Pack and Episode 4. Now I have extended out and built in the, the, the dirt dirty or a lot more dirty than we had as I said in the last episode. I've also extended out the mob farm and pushed it back much further as you can see. Um, because of course there is that minimum distance of 20 blocks I think it is uh, for them to spawn to see if that helps it's still the same size but just pushed further back now what I'm looking at doing next is trying to look at tinkers or they're about start upgrading our items and getting the weapons tools um, or, well, not armors because you can't do that, but yeah, the weapons and tools, etc., both upgraded and made so that we can repair them easily without pratting about with anvils and stuff like that. Um, now, in terms of what resources we're going to use, we'll have to wait until we get there and what we get. Of course, the better ones to use are iron and steel when we get to steel. And then as soon as we get to the nether, then we'll look at sort of R die and cobalt into manialium manialium I don't know how to say that bloody word that uh, yeah the the M stuff the purple stuff yes we'll be using that I hope uh, a good change as well is that this is an older pack which means that it's the older tinkers which means we get the crossbows still because they've been removed in later updates so just going through and building all of the necessary buildings or, yeah, machines, buildings, tables uh, for the quest, really. You don't necessarily need all of this. Obviously, you need your stencil thing to make your stencils and your part builder to make your parts. Make them out of cobblestone is what I usually do because it's readily available. And you can use that to then cast an actual cast to then make your metal items. Now, I never bother with the fancy alloys that it uses for tinkers to make the casts. I just use gold. So two gold ingots makes a cast of any description as long as you chuck it around something to mold it. So that's what I'm going to do. And I can see spawning now happening within the mob farm, although minimal. But anything is better than nothing, right? So let's go and get some loot. -ay. It's a zombie. They can't really fight back. Nothing can. Um, the skeletons may or may not be able to bop you, but it is unlikely that they can. Obviously, if I put the tiles the other way around so it's lower down, the tiny ones, you know, the tiny skeletons are only one block tall, they're usually quite good at actually attacking you through the gap, so... Be warned. I'm trying to end that quest, not realizing that you need to kill all of them things above. Zombie skeleton creeper and an ancient golem is required to complete that simple quest. It is not just kill one zombie like it looks like on the right hand side. So what felt like one million clay, it probably wasn't. In fact, it definitely wasn't. Uh, we finally made the poisoning clay items to make the very basic smeltery... Um, porcelain smeltery items these are a prerequisite to make the seared because you can't make the grout it looks like or at least melt it any other way other than using this smeltery setup so once I've fired the item so I can actually use them I can then chuck this down the melter the melting pot with the, the um, power in it which would be larvae and we can then start making the items that we need. As soon as we get a smeltery, we can not only make the upgraded tools and weapons, as I've said previously, but we can also double ores reasonably simple if we wish. Now, it's all depending on how I'm going to move forward. But I think realistically, I obviously said no there because, yes, I made two of the same thing, didn't I? I made two of the tables when I need a table and a casting basin to make the blocks so now i'm going to have to make more to make the table uh, to make that again same recipe really but just upside down and as you can see here we've finally finished this area of grass 
No, I need to get some bone meal down on it to get some flowers and stuff. And the hopes then the passive mobs will start to spawn. And then we'll get things like chickens, cows, sheep and pigs. As it's temporary, I'm just chucking it down over here. Which means that it's right next to the lava if we need it. But I'm not, uh, to be honest, the tanks that come with the Tinker stuff hold four buckets anyway. There's no way we're going to need more than that. All I need to do now is chuck in my items. As you can see, the clay can go in there. That will make the seared brick. We then need to get it out of there to make it into multiple things. But that's going to be some of that I may automate as best I can with hoppers um, or any piping. Because, let's face it, no one wants to sit there and do them three at a time. That's going to take forever. Now, to make the smeltery properly, you're going to need a crap ton of bricks. And even more of the blocks to make the actual unit itself. And some glass. And I think pretty much that's all you need, right, for for it. Now, you can see here, just chucking in two gold ingots. And then I've thrown in a random ingot of any sort. Um, then putting the gold ingots on top of that will make an ingot cast. Obviously destroying the ingot you use. So make sure you use something cheap like iron. Um, and then from there, we can then tell it to output the seared, liquid seared brick. And we can start making those. Now, you can't mix in there. You can't do alloys, even though I'm not making an alloy, which was annoying. So what I did was deleted it, which deletes everything in there. Put the gold back in. That will allow me to have gold, because you can only have one item in there at a time. Put that out. That will make the cast and then put the clay back in. So same principle, but I just wasted three of the seared bricks there. I had to delete them because you couldn't put two in at a time. So there you go. Gold. Gold comes straight out. And we now have an ingot cast. And now we can put in the grout and make a crap ton of seared bricks. Now, you, you can set this up reasonably simply, automatically. All you need underneath, underneath the casting table is a hopper that will take the ingots out when they're done, or bricks in this case. Um, and if you make a clock, a redstone clock, which is reasonably cheap, especially if you've been sifting as much as I have, you can automatically output as well. A redstone signal on those spouts automatically outputs the liquid. So all it will do is automatically output, then when it sets, it will get taken by the hopper, and then it will automatically output, set, automatically output, set. And you can just leave it alone. Now I'm going to have to quickly just do a bit of sifting, because I'm obviously clearly missing the resources to do so. But again, it's a reasonably simple setup and something that is definitely worth doing early game. Now, I am no expert in this whole sh automatic shaker. I think I said that from the beginning. But what I have established is that it doesn't seem to matter what I do too much with the liquid. Although I am having the liquid now wrap round and it is working better. Every time you add a wheel on, they just get faster. It adds to the next one. So if I shut down this many, as you've just seen there, and then do the same setup, it should be turning many times faster than the original, and therefore the shaker will be much faster. Now, once I've got that set up, all I have to do is put a bit of time into... I mean, gravel's pretty simple, because it's just straight from the, the, the cobblestone, but to work down the line to, to finishing with dust or sand in between... Uh, I will need to put a bit of time in, but then all I have to do is put a chest on the shaker and leave it. And then I can go, like I say, turn on the thing to go AFK and just let it finish. And then come back in an hour and see what resources I have. It's not going to cause any problems. I'm not going to die because everything's lit up, but I will build myself in a box just in case. But no one wants to watch that. And I certainly don't want to sit here and wait for it when there's not much else to do while I'm waiting for a specific resource. So that's how I like to do it. Uh, especially at the early game and then what happens is when I come back I've got loads of resources and there's lots of projects you can technically start because you have all of that additional resources that you didn't have before obviously this is pretty much self I just need to chuck all the water in and we hope to see it work a bit better now that's really crap I've obviously done something wrong it's slower than it was before as opposed to faster now, the sieve goes on top, and you only need one shaker per... I uh, have many sieves, to be honest. So that is something I didn't know. 
And then you actually put the goods in on the shaker itself, not the sieve. So you would put the hopper into that bottom block, not the top block. And with a bit of magic of editing there, you can see I managed to get it working. I had to rip out all of the uh, wheels and put them back in in the right order so that they... Because they were slow this end, but they were fast the other end. So <laughs> I've just done it the opposite way around. And you can see now that is shaking that. The hopper there into the bottom, so whatever I put in there will be automatically thrown into the sifter, shaken, and giving you the resources. Now, the problem is collecting those resources, so I'm going to try by surrounding it with a load of hoppers. Now, this will work, but it won't get everything. Of course, a vacuum chest of some description or a collector is your end game here, but we need ender pearls for that. For all of those, we need ender pearls, and we haven't seen an enderman yet because we've barely seen a zombie. So it is automated, though the goods are not quite going where I want them to. It's making a bit of a mess, but it is working. I'm sure some of the resources are probably falling off the edge as well and falling into the void of space um, and just being deleted. But if we're not having to do it, it is a step forward. Now, you can surround it with blocks that do seem to work. I like to use glass so that you can see what's going off. And there you go. I have used glass. And this tries to keep some of the resources in, forcing them to fall onto the hoppers. And the hoppers are linked in such a way that they all end up in that chest. Now, the center where the sieve is, the goods will just stay there. They won't be collected because they can't go anywhere. So be warned, that block is always going to be a bit messy. Whether you can use a fan or something as an entity mover. But again, this is early game. And I'm not too worried. It's temporary until we can get something more useful. So I don't mind micromanage it every so often. Bearing in mind, every time I micromanage it, I'm going to be getting resources out of it as well. So it's all progress. IMO. And if we just check the chest, you can see there is our items that we've gathered automatically. Which is decent. Throwing them instantly into there. We're finally getting diamonds again. <clears throat> so I can now start uh, worrying less about running out of diamonds for the hammers and the wands now what i have noticed and i didn't notice early enough like now what we're watching but i'm going to tell you anyway you can compress the gravel sorry the cobble the gravel the sand and the dust and use the same items there is no compressed hammer or compressed wand or anything and if you do that it's nine times more efficient of course so make sure you do that so compressing your gravel, sand, etc. down, then smacking it with the hammer turns it into compressed dust or sand, depending on what you've done. And then when you uncompress it, you get the singular items that you can use for whatever you want. So compress it only once, compress it, do it, and then uncompress it, and you're just doing everything nine times faster. And it also doesn't appear to use any more durability either, so it's nine times more efficient on durability. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to do that. Obviously, you need a decent amount of resources to start doing massive amounts of compression because you need, well, nine times more resources. But in the end, it will definitely be more efficient. You can see that I've just set up the island with a few trees and a bit of grass. That should hopefully allow some of the passive mobs to start spawning. We do need things like chickens for eggs and cows for milk so we can make cakes to make both of the cakes for the nether to get there and to the end to get there also. And jumping forward a little bit and welcome back. A couple of days, in-game days, I've managed to, well, get a bit of armor, the very cheap beginnings of armor anyway. But more importantly, we have upgraded the mob farm slightly. Now I've got plenty of ladders. Yes, I've tried to make it look like a little face with a mask on. I am not a Minecraft uh, artiste, uh, so that's basically the best I can do. Now, whether you think it's a mask or whether you think it's from here, it's up to you. You see, I've done the drop-down option I normally go to, so it keeps it at level height, stops anything from shooting me, and allows me to get in there when I need to. And, of course, you can see by the actual enemies on the thing, it is spawning much better now. Now, these ladders, of course, started by needing to be able to get up here. And up at the top, it's just the same. Slab so nothing can spawn, but I put some torches there anyway because I just like the look of it. And then you see we've got the ladder to come back down again. Now in here there are many mobs, so it is working a lot better than it was before. Realistically though, the only difference is 
It's a little bit wider. Um, but I think about, well, every three blocks I made a couple of other blocks. So it goes up three blocks and then there's another floor with holes in. And then it goes up three blocks and there's a, a, a roof. So it just gives more surface area even though it's still only one deep. Um, this is still working. Obviously I've got a diamond, diamond thing there. And then the rest of them are flint. Now that does work and the hoppers are working also to a point. They are missing some still, but it is definitely a massive upgrade from what we had before. And you can see there, there's some decent resources coming out now as well. As soon as I can auto-delete that rock candy, I shall. The drawers aren't filling up because I'm not using them too efficiently. There's the resource where I'm not going to use them for the dusts and the, the, the various bits you get from Sivin. I'm going to do it. Even the chunks that you then combine them to, I'm only using it for the end game, which is the final result, whether it be a diamond or an ingot. Now, I'll bring you along for a bit of my science. So, obviously, the spawning was working to a point, but it wasn't as much as what I thought or was expecting it to be. And we are on a void world, so it's not like this spawning anywhere else. So, to make sure that there wasn't a bug that I wasn't aware of or any issues with the settings that I have checked in terms of the XMLs and looked that there's nothing untoward by using uh, good old Google to help me out. I decided just to throw a nice simple cobblestone platform out of a distance of 20 blocks. No lights, nothing on there, and then see what happens at night time. And the, the idea here is quite simple. If there's a problem, nothing will happen on that platform. If the game is normal, stuff will spawn on that platform. I mean, it's it's inevitable the answer was nothing spawned um but i saw a command that you can put in that resets the spawn counter of I, I don't understand the, the fanciness of it but it says it un uh, updates the spawn counter so i used that and it did seem to make a difference so i deleted the platform because the last thing i wanted was for something to happen on there that would kill me when I'm not resourced for it and see what happens with this and straight away I was getting stuff spawning so I'm hopeful that that means that something is working as expected now getting this stuff out of there is a bit awkward because obviously it's trapped technically although there is a gap there there isn't um because it's a full full block so you do have to break the slab and open it up every now and again to allow the magnetism to pull it out. The magnetism from the trophy things where you get from the rack points uh, is really, really poor. There's also a bit of a weird wobbly lag thing going on here. I'm not sure what that's about. I don't remember seeing it when I was playing it, um, but we'll move past that. So with hopefully the spawning issue out of the way, although slow, it is seemingly working now. Uh, I'm going to get some obsidian. Now, the easiest way to get that is using your stone barrel, chucking your larvae in it, and uh, chucking water on the top. Now, I could have done this cleaner by just leaving the lava on the top by putting some stones around it and then leaving the bucket there, but I didn't. So, there we go. Um, I'm using this to get the obsidian to make the upgrades for the drawers. The first upgrade is obsidian, um, and then I think it's something like iron, gold, diamond, emerald, something like that. It's part of the quests anyway, but I am getting to the point now where some of the drawers are getting filled up, specifically around iron ingots. I've get I, when you do in other sifting, you get a lot of iron. Iron is um, plentiful. We're not we don't have a problem with iron at all, so that's good. The other items not so much, but iron, yeah. So making sure to use that to upgrade your your weapons or whatever you can is always good. But also it means that these upgrades, as you can see, which are iron upgrades, means we can make a crap ton of those. Because we are going to start getting a lot more resources than drawers can hold. I think the, the, the base drawer only holds 8 stacks. So 8 times 64. Um, and at that point then it's full. And then obviously you're going to have problems where you're going to put the stuff. So with us doing so much sifting and with the sifting being automated to a point. Um, you need to keep on top of your drawers and making sure that they don't cap out. Because we don't really have the chest space to be putting all this other random crap that we're going to be getting so you can see i'm going up there for the basis of the 
quests, but I'm not going to be using diamond upgrades. I think for now, iron or maybe gold, because we do have quite a lot of gold as well, is fine. But diamond and emerald, no, not yet. In fact, to be honest, I don't really think that we're going to need to go that far because before we get there, I'm hoping to have a better storage setup anyway. But we need to complete the quest, so why not? So I needed paper and we don't have the sugarcane reed type things. So I put the market then down there. You can see that guy. And basically for a rack, you can buy any seed or sapling. So I bought the paper bark tree, as you can see growing there. It was three racks, so nice and cheap. And all that does is grows in a bonsai pot as normal. And then every now and again, it gives you some paper. Yay. So that will give us our paper for now. We can use that for a couple of things. But to be honest... Moving forward, it's going to be used for filters and things like that because you do need paper for that sort of stuff, especially around the uh, filters for piping. Also, while we're at it, I'm going to make another uh, bouncing bonsai type thing and we can chuck an apple sapling in there. So although it does, although the normal tree gives you apples, the apple sapling will give you many, many more. More saplings, less less wood. Um, so we've got a wood growing tree, a sapling, uh, one for paper, and then one for apples, just to make sure we don't run out of food anytime soon until we get something more useful. Now, I know from previous that as soon as you get a mob farm working decent, uh, you get them smorguts, I think they're called. They're basically like ingot food that give you movement speed, but they're really good and you get loads of them. So we'll be living on that until we finally do some proper kitchen work and get like some cheeseburgers or something. And finally, before we end the episode, there is the guy that you can trade with. We have built the dimension for hunting so we can get the golems. Um, it's a dangerous place to go to, so I would advise being quick is what I did. Emerald sword and an emerald pickaxe, nice and cheap, and they're a much higher level than the iron ones. Um, so I would, yeah, the, with the, I'm not using the diamonds because we need them for other things like the hammers and the... The, the ones, but the emeralds are a bit useless at the minute, so I am going to do that. Now, we are moving into the Ancient Codex, which means we are working and moving into the Embers mod, which is the worst mod for me, my personal opinion, is the mod I hate the, 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 the least. I like the least out of all of the mods in this mod pack. Mod pack. Um, and that laggy thing's really showing up on this. Hopefully, it's not coming through too bad for your end, but I'll see if I can fix that. But yeah, we're going to get into embers now because we have to to make the uh, ultimate dawnstone ember crystal thing to get to the twilight. So likely the next episode will be around dawnstone and embers. Hopefully you enjoy that more than I do, but we've got to do it. So let's see. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like any comments are welcome. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Goodbye.